Okay, helping me today with this project is my granddaughter, Raven. Raven, say hello. Hi. She's going to be running the camera, so you can follow along on this tutorial. Thanks, Raven, for all your help. Hi there, Sine here with another gardening vid. Today we're going to have a really quick tutorial on how to build a tumbling composter. I'm going to use a wheeled trash can with a locking lid mechanism and turn this into a tumbling composter in about 20 minutes. So if you're ready, let's get started. So for this project, we're going to need a few simple tools. Um, I have my tape measure, which I'm going to use to measure the distance between the holes. I have my drill motor, which I'm going to use to drill the holes. I have a paddle bit 3 8 inch wide. Um, however, if you have these kind of drill bits, this is acceptable as well. I have my X-Acto knife, which I'm going to use to trim the surplus around the hole. And I have a Sharpie that I'm going to use to mark where the holes go. I'm a little bit anal retentive, so I'm also going to use my drywall speed square to mark a straight line so that my holes are all in alignment. So if you're ready, let's get started. As you know, there are three main elements to good composting. A good carbon to nitrogen mix, which you'll see below this video, um, aeration, which is the introduction of airflow, and moisture. Those three things in combination create compost out of organic material. So we're going to need a bunch of holes in this. I'm going to put them about four inches apart all the way up and down this trash can. I'm also going to put some here in the collar and a couple in the lid as well. Now this locking lid keeps it from rolling, uh, keeps it from the compost from falling out when I roll it. And to use this tumbling composter, I don't need any complicated frames or anything like that. I'm just going to tip it over, roll it along the ground a couple of three times, and then stand it back up. With it being on wheels, I can take it directly to where I need it to pick up leaves or garden material or, or um, grass clippings. So what I'm going to do is take my tape measure and I'm going to mark four inches down from the bottom several times. Four, That's a pretty good run. I'm also going to take my speed square and I'm going to draw a straight line. Just again because I am really anxious to keep all of this in a line. Okay, so that's my line. These are my marks and I'm just going to drill holes in the side of this. Now using a paddle bit means it's going to pop really fast. I'm going to leave the lid on to give me a little bit of stability and I'm just going to pop. Okay, that's it. Now I'll take and spend a few minutes marking all the holes and I'll be back with you in just a moment. In the break, what I've done is I've gone through and I've made a series of marks every four inches. I'm going to use my speed square to just mark a straight line for each one of those marks. This, this should help it go a little bit faster. So straight line, turn it, straight line, turn it. Okay, that's it. So I've gone through and I've marked my lines up and down all the way around. And I mentioned to you every four inches, you know what, that, that's not an exact science. The purpose of this is just to introduce air into the composter when it turns. So I'm just going to eyeball the rest of these. They'll be on my line and I'm okay with that. So I'm going to take and drill about five holes on each one of these lines, just eyeballing it. I'll be back with you in just a moment. Just a few more here, the collar will be done. Then I'm going to switch to a different drill bit. 3 8 is a little bit too big for the five or six holes I need on the bottom of the composter. Now the ones on the bottom of the composter are to release some of the moisture that is going to accumulate both from your compost that you add from your kitchen. 
sometimes wet, and the water that you're going to be adding because, again, compost need uh, moisture. But we don't want it to sit down there and stagnate. We don't want to create a moldy, murky bottom. So I'm going to put a few small holes down the bottom of this using a much smaller drill bit just to allow that moisture to evacuate the composter. Okay, so as you can see, I finished the collar here. Now because the collar is a little bit thicker material and a little bit more sturdy, I could put quite a few more holes up here to get me my additional aeration. Now I've taken my 3 8 inch bit off and I've put on a 7 16 inch smaller bit here. I'm going to lay this down, drill five or six holes here on the bottom. Now as you can see, this is a locking mechanism. See, I pull it down. Now the lid will come off. Let me just give a little tug. Okay. So I'm going to turn it upside down, flat on the ground, and I'm just going to hit this with a few places, particularly here in these low spots. Now this is a bit more work. Uh, this is not quite as effective as the paddle bit, but I don't need giant holes. I just want to let a little bit of moisture out. I want to retain as much as possible for the compost to get its benefit from it, but I just don't want it to stagnate. Okay, that's it. Okay, that's it. We've got holes now to aerate the bottom to allow the moisture to escape. So basically what I've got, instead of spending $200 on a um, aerating composter, a tumbling composter, I have created one for the 12 to 15, 20 dollars that you spend on the um, trash can. I've got it where uh, you can just put your material in here, lay it down, spin it across the yard a few times to introduce air, stand it back up, drag it where you need it. So this is Sine for Gardening Vids signing off with this how-to. The next video will be how to put your compost material in here, what you need, and what the good ratios are to get the best breakdown. So till next time, this is Sine signing off.